Yeah, the Hacker Games is a charity-led hackathon that brings together 10 of the UK's top engineering teams um, in a competitive environment to see ultimately who can build the best product in two days. Each team was provided with a brief 24 hours before the hack and the hack itself consists of two days worth of work. Um, at the end of the two days they'll be pitching their idea and their product to a group of leading industry experts. I'm Dominic Green, I'm one of the lead software engineers at ASOS, so we've got a team of five of us down here today for the hackathon. We're a team of five, we are one product manager, that's me, a front-end engineer, back-end engineer, designer um, and a mobile developer. I'm Lisa Tugwell, I'm one of the product owners and I'm here representing Rated People. We've got some app developers, we've got some .NET developers, some front-end developers, all that kind of stuff. Um, we'll come down to try and basically help out this event and get some cool accessibility tech. Cool. So one of the major reasons we're actually here today is to raise money and awareness for Special Effects. Special Effect is a charity that helps people with disabilities to get more out of life through technology. Uh, we work with some of the most disabled people in the country, uh, travelling out to visit them either in their own homes or in hospitals to come up with bespoke solutions to their personal uh, issues. Our idea is to um, allow you to tell people about yourself. We're trying to take the boredom out of the physiotherapy that children have to go through uh, who are suffering from uh, degenerative muscular diseases. So we're making a game for blind people. Um, they're in a maze and they can't see anything and there's a player helping them who can see the maze but the walls are invisible force fields so they have to navigate their way around the maze by sound. We believe we can make that fun through animated graphics, uh, simple games uh, that allow the focus to be taken away from what it is they're exercising and focus more on the fun they're having with the, with the game. I know someone who's deaf and um, he's just moved into his new apartment which is on like the 20th floor of his building. The norm is that basically when a doorbell rings the lights flash in a lot of like, disabled people's houses. So we've taken that concept a little bit further by basically making the lights flash using the Philips Hue. It will um, basically buzz through to his phone so he gets an alert basically saying there's someone at the door. When he opens that the app opens up and he gets a little video conference with video or chat conference with the guy. So it goes from voice basically to text and then we'll play the conversation as text. We definitely wanted to make a game, we're kids, that's what we do, um, and we, we needed to make a game that works well with someone who has some form of disability, so as they move around the maze, they can hear the sound coming from, from these uh, force fields. Um, they use a controller to move around, but they can also use head tracking to kind of help position themselves. We live in London, it's one of the most populous cities in the world, but you feel completely isolated without technology. Can I create a task and have it posted on a map say I'm a person in need right now, I'm a blind person stood at a busy road and I'm scared and I need some help. I like the idea of a, um, a challenge to make something, like make games more accessible. I'm Paul, uh, I'm the CTO at Founders Factory and I'm the technical judge for the Hacker Games today. And the difficulty with it, with a, you know, two days to work on is that you can really only go in one or two directions. You can either build something really innovative um, and like have that kernel of, of something very cool. The alternative is to build something functional but generally you don't really have the time. The key focus of the product is to use consumer technology, um, such as mobile smartphones and tablets that you might have in the house uh, to enable um, this fun experience of, of performing physio that children have to go through. The brief was so broad, we can pick any kind of disability, physical, mental, any kind of app, any kind of, any kind of thing, so the, the risk is that you could go super, super broad and, and get a bit stuck in trying to bring it down, so we've just picked one thing that we know that we can do really well and we know that can benefit all of the users that they have. Scope is, uh, is quite a big challenge. The way that I'm trying to score it is to reward people who go in either direction. For me the most difficult thing is that you want to build the most amazing thing in the world. You want to build everything with all these bells and whistles and a million different directions you can go with it. Um, narrowing down something that can demonstrate value in two days is the most difficult part. If you build something that's innovative and functional and complete and ready to go then like, you'll definitely win. We're an end-to-end -end team, so we have back-end developers, we have front-end native developers, we've got design, and uh, we're really trying to um, deliver an end-to-end -end, uh, platform. 
some of our back-end heavy guys creating like a web service using Azure, which will basically do all the communication. And then we've got our more like front-end guides working on the kind of web layer, which is the what you'd see in your phone, and also the kind of Philips Hue integration API kind of thing to move back and forwards. Uh, we're beginning to realise as we get to four o'clock, I think it is today, that uh, uh, that may or may not happen. I think what we're going to learn most is how much you can really achieve in two days. The product we're building is a three minute pitch tomorrow. How are we going to tell the story of the product we're trying to build? So accessibility is something we should be thinking of from like day one in any project we're doing. In the end, there was one team which we felt kind of got that balance right. That winner was Omnibel. As somebody working in technology, I think our takeaway will be that it can be used for some serious, serious good. We try and force ourselves to justify taking two days out of the office to come and do things like this because it's, it's not just a reputation thing, it's a cultural thing. We're trying to solve big problems here. Well, I guess the majority of things that we learn from some of the other teams as well is, is the little tiny things that make a really big difference. It's incredible to know that there's organisations like the Note guys out there that are thinking in this different way. Honestly, it sounds pompous, but they are truly different at what they do.